So we are here in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and we are gonna answer this question. Could we live here in Chiang Mai? You know, we have been to Bangkok, we've been to Phuket, and we're up here. And today we're gonna do something special because we are gonna talk to some friends that actually live here and we are gonna interview them. We are gonna ask them about why they chose Chiang Mai, their cost of living, their quality of life, all of these things that a lot of you guys have been wondering about when it comes to moving to Thailand. Because, you know, Ch Chiang Mai just feels different. It's not like Bangkok, it's not like Phuket. It, it has its own, its own vibe. You know, when you compare it to Bangkok, Bangkok is the, the skyscrapers, the noise, the chaos. But Chiang Mai has acquaintance to it, but it still has a big city feel. And so I cannot wait to talk to this couple about why they chose Chiang Mai. The other thing that's really cool is that one of the folks that we're meeting with, Lindsay, she is in our 365 Days to Fire program. That's our financial independence program where you do daily action items to get you closer to financial independence. She's one of the folks we're talking to. She lives here in Chiang Mai, and I cannot wait to hear what she has to say about her life here in Thailand. So let's get on the road and let's go. Let's go talk to some folks. I'm Michael. Uh, I mo we moved to Chiang Mai like four months ago, um, and I do online business consulting for marketing, sales, automations. And I moved to Chiang Mai because I just love the vibes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lindsay. Um, I moved to Chiang Mai also because I love the vibes. Um, I work in regenerative finance, which is helping startup companies create circularity and sustainability in their businesses. Um, I love building community. So part of the communities I joined was the 365 Days to Fire program. Um, and I also joined this travel community, which brought me around the world a year ago, uh, living in a different country every month. And that is how I ended up in Chiang Mai. It's also how I met Michael. Uh, we're so excited to share about our life in Chiang Mai. Yeah, so for me, uh, why I moved to Chiang Mai specifically was I found that um, it was very easy to integrate into the community um, of both locals and expats. And I found that uh, people are very kind. There's so much live music that happens here. And I myself play music. And so I like the music uh, and yeah, I like the music and the people. And I think that it attracts, I think that Chiang Mai attracts a certain type of chilled out person and someone that just wants to be kind to other people and to get their work done, live their life. Um, and then I think also, I think that the local culture here of people in Chiang Mai from Thailand uh, are very welcoming of foreigners. And so it's not like, a, hey, like you're taking over our land or like, hey, you're you know raising our rent or something like that. But um, they, Basically, everyone is very welcoming and it's all about just, hey, you're here, I'm here, let's have fun together and be friends. The funny thing is I haven't actually been in other cities in Thailand. I, I just fell in love with Chiang Mai. Um, when I was on the travel program, uh, Chiang Mai was one of the, the last parts on our stop. We started in Latin America and, and went to Asia and ended here. Um, I had never been to Asia before, um, but I was looking for something more peaceful. I did a ton of personal development and actually like recovery and I was looking for a very calm uh, beautiful place to live with people who were very peaceful. I find Thai people to be incredibly peaceful, kind, generous. Um, so for me when I pick a place to live it really has to do with the people. Um, I also just kind of fell in love with the creativity of the city. Uh, when we were getting oriented here yeah, our community leader, she just showed us like three streets, but she's like, these are the restaurants you need, these are the coffee you need, these are the bubble tea dealers you need. And it had everything that I needed. I, I really um, am super happy in the one Nima na neighborhood. I go to Yellow Cowork. I absolutely love my cowork. Um, there's tons of interesting local people. There's tons of really fascinating expats here from all over. Um, so I have the ability to make community, make friends. I'm just, I have, 
pretty much all of my needs met here and I just kind of fell in love with Chiang Mai. So we could probably so. send you the, we'll send you the, the numbers later so you have, you can put it in here. Um, but my estimate is that we usually pick an, we use Airbnb. Uh, I love Airbnb. Um, and we, it's a generally about $800 a month. So we split it between two of us. So it's 400 for rent a month. We live in a one bedroom studio uh, right now. Um, Usually what we yeah, do. like one bedroom or like a studio. Um, I, technically, right now we're in like one bedroom. I think technically, um, and we're in a condominium right now. But a lot of people live in either condos or houses that get rented out. Um, depends on how close. The closer you are to like the city center or like Neiman or Old Town, the more you're going to be in apartments or condos. Um, the further out you get, the more there are houses and you rent apartments, uh, like within houses or um, just houses overall. Yeah, and I think um, I'll just add to the housing thing. I think I would say an estimate is like between, we're in like a pr really, I would say like a very nice neighborhood for the $800 per month. You could be in a nice neighborhood and be at like probably closer to like $400 a month or less even. I know someone who's like 200 a month, 250 a month. USC um, in places that they really love, uh, but it's just a little further from like the city center. Um, and so I just want to give that like a, a bit of information there. There's a caveat to that too, in that uh, a lot of our friends that have been living here for a longer time, they don't even use Airbnb. They just either work with the Airbnb host offline mm -hmm. uh, for a cheaper price, they get rid of all the fees, or they just find local people who are renting out and they do it for like half the price. So that would be like 400 for us to split would be. Yeah. Um, I spend about 200 a month on food, um, eating partially locally, partially kind of expat places. A meal will be between at Khao Soy, uh, 250 for a local, uh, local Khao Soy, local soup. Uh, USD. Yes, yeah, sorry, USD. Um, ranging up to maybe like 1050 for like a healthy salad bowl with tons of fresh veggies and fruit that looks like the rainbow skin. Yeah. And I, I probably spend about 500 on food a month because I'm I go crazy <laughs> to be honest but I, that's but that's just me yeah. but like I could eat for cheaper but like <laughs> I'm eating very well for $500 <laughs> USD a month what about transportation what do you guys use for transportation and cost for that oh. yeah Chiang Mai is super walkable so I actually walk mm, mostly everywhere sometimes we take grabs um, you can take grab bikes uh, I'm not the most biggest user yeah. of, of motorbikes, but it is fun. Um, but I, yeah, we usually use grab cars if we have to go across town for something. Yeah, there are rideshare apps pretty much just like um, just like anywhere in the world right now. But here it's Grab and uh, Bolt is very popular. Um, Bolt is like uh, two thirds cheaper or something like that. It's like a, like twenty percent cheaper or something. Um, and if you wanted to go somewhere further away, you could either rent a car or most places that you would want to get to, you can just rent a, like a, get a driver to drive you out there and it's not going to be that much. Um, About how much dollar wise, like for, getting around? Uh, if I wanted to, if I grabbed somewhere every day, like just within maybe 20 minutes or like 30 minutes drive, um, I'd probably spend like a hundred, dollars usd 150 dollars usd a month it's about what 100 it's like 100 for, bot for to like a 15 is, 20 minute yeah ride which somewhere. is which is how much uh, uh it's like, like three dollars no no it's like three dollars maybe uh, okay Perfect. so uh what else is there housing food um health care health care yeah i just right now have travel insurance and so that my travel insurance because I'm out of my country of residence or like my country of nationality um, covers basically like any kind of emergency slash like basic, like, oh, I have a, if I have a cold and I need to go see a doctor, then it covers that. Um, so that's what I have for health insurance right now. It's like $45 a month, USD. Um, and then in Thailand, like if you want to just go and see a doctor, it's gonna be maybe like $25 USD somewhere around I think a thousand baht um, currently uh, to see like a, a regular doctor or like some something along those lines. If you need to see a specialist, it might be more, um, but I think it's fairly reasonable if you're not. I don't know about having extreme health insurance. Knock on wood, um, but that's what I've got for health insurance right now. Yeah, 
Yeah, and we do have friends here that actually are coming to Thailand for medical treatment. Um, some like a friend that has long COVID symptoms, and so he went to like 120 doctors in the U.S. Some of them wouldn't do a test that he needed, and then he came to Chiang Mai oh. to get the test, and they found like certain things that were really important. He brought it back to the U.S. They were like, "Oh, we didn't know. We we didn't we wouldn't take that because your insurance wouldn't let us do this test." or wouldn't cover yeah. this test. So um, we do know people that are here that are uh, seeking, you know, that seeking medical treatment that they couldn't get in the U.S. because yeah. of the cost. So we joined this travel program where we were spending about 2,200 a month to live in a different city um, every month for a year. And, and that is about comparable to what it would be in, I was living in Washington, D.C. Um, rent would be maybe anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 um, maybe more but it depends on the neighborhood um, but yeah here I probably am spending a third of what I would be spending living in Washington DC um, while still having my same needs uh, equally met if not a higher quality of life because I have more time I can participate in more activities and there's not that financial barrier to where I need to like pick and choose 40% of the activities that I can afford versus uh, I can attend 100% here yeah, um, I was living in San Diego. It was about two thousand dollars for rent. Probably was like a thousand dollars for groceries and food uh, a month. And then I wasn't get I wasn't at a co work, but it would have been like five hundred dollars a month for a co work. Um, plus, like getting around gas, it's probably it's probably close to like thirty five hundred or four thousand dollars a month cost of living in San Diego. Yeah, but another great place is just like Facebook groups. There's a ton of housing Facebook groups where people are offering uh, long-term leases um, for apartments and for homes in Chiang Mai. And that's definitely a good place. And also, again, with the people being very kind, if you see like an apartment complex or a home, like a house that seems like it might have accommodations, you just go and knock on the door and just say, hey, like, what are your rates for, for accommodations here? So it might be something, if you're coming to Chiang Mai and you're not sure where you want to be, like come rent an Airbnb or find a place on Facebook Marketplace or Facebook and then go around and like knock on doors and see if you can get a, a better place or for a better price or whatever you want. Yeah, and I think once you get here, there are a lot of people willing to help you. You could join a, a co-working space and meet people and they have all the intel about housing in the city. Um, there's also WhatsApp groups. There's a Chiang Mai accommodation group. Um, so you could just join the, that WhatsApp group and there's always postings on uh, housing available. Uh, I think, you know, making sure that whatever you're, if, if you have work or remote work, making sure that you're making probably around, I'd say 1500 a month at least and you would be swimming pretty, um, being able to kind of just live and not have to stress about money. That would be the, like the minimum amount that I would say. Um, and then tips, Niman, the neighborhood of Niman is, I would say cooler than Old Town. Old Town is where you're gonna hear about in Chiang Mai, but Niman is like much more, it's like half locals, half expats, but it's very like people are living here, not necessarily like touristing here, even though there are quite a few tourists. Um, and then once you get here, then see if there's other areas that you want to live in, either further south or a little bit further out. Um, tips, uh, try the cow soy, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, I would agree with Michael's estimate of 1500 USD. You would be very comfortable here. Uh, my biggest tip would be to meet local people. Uh, make sure that you like being here, um, they can help you a lot. Local people are super kind, very supportive here. Uh, every day at the co work, they give me like a new little fruit to try, like, here's a mango seed. So I think accept gifts from locals. Um, uh, I've always found the most joy in like living like a local. So if you come, try not to just do all the touristy things. I mean, the temples are beautiful here, Old Town is really amazing. Try the night markets, try to go to a co work, uh, go to like a local class, Facebook. Uh, Facebook is really great if you just look up events and then you can find all sorts of things happening locally here. That's how I find all my events. Uh, to add on to that, um, Thailand is on Facebook. They're not on Instagram as much. Is more more Facebook for events and things like that. And they're online, which yeah, they're I still online. don't have, but it's, like it's not rather app. than WhatsApp. Um, yeah, if you're in the U.S. or you're in Europe, in, in your home country, download Line, L-I-N-E, 
before you get here because it'll be very challenging that the text messaging doesn't work to get the verification codes to sign up. So you gotta sign up for it before you get here. That's yeah. the tip right there. But Facebook groups, Facebook events, that's where it's at for yeah. Mai. Right now on Instagram, <laughs> it's Lindsay Rian, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-R-I-A-N-E. -E. And for me, it's at the Michael Rosenberg on Instagram or YouTube. Come over there. I'm sharing content about how to start things and how to finish things, uh, as well as a little travel and music mixed in. Yeah, and my YouTube link is in my Instagram, so find me from that. <laughs> yeah. Great. That's All right, cool. perfect. Yeah.